check it out one battery powering goggles and wireless head tracker no wires to the transmitter also works with the Radio Master TX16S with a bit of work got my pan tilt system here completely wireless you can see on the screen everything moving through crossfire let me show you how to do it today I'm going to be showing you how to add a wireless head tracker to the DJI FPV goggles the idea is that you can power up both the goggles and the head tracker using a single battery in this case up to a 4S LiPo there's no need for any wires go into your transmitter because it's utilizing the FR Sky Parrot Wireless Trainer, but more on that later because you don't necessarily need that for this to work. It's also utilizing the British Drone Industries Digi Adapter, which costs about 40 GBP and it's a non-destructive way to add an analog module so it's literally just these two screws here and it bolts on the front so it doesn't mess up your warranty or anything like that and this modification is using the two pins to power up one of these it is an Arduino Nano 33 BLE board the non-sense version costs about 25 GBP and you will also need one of these this is a 6 millimeter by 6 millimeter button now the sense version of the Nano 33 BLE board has a sensor that essentially lets you wave your hand in front of it and it will reset the center position of your head tracker however I don't think that is a good setup because once you have centered your head track you don't really need to do it again you need to do it every flight but once it's set then I wouldn't trust anybody or even myself accidentally waving my hand in front of it also this board is going to sit in that way so a button is just going to be better because then that can sit flat against this 3d printed part here so, the 3D printed part is something that I have remixed from a chap on Thingiverse called Andy Albeit 90 So, I've remixed it to make these clips more robust so that it fits tighter in here. I mean, this is quite tricky to get out here. And I've also added this flush 6mm by 6mm hole for this button here. I've also made it so that the board, this is a prototype one, clips in really tight however you will need some double-sided tape on there, very thin, just to keep it in place. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to print this off yourself. And if you haven't got a 3D printer, then you can use a service like 3D Hubs or something like that. It's printed out of PLA and it doesn't need any supports or anything like that very simple just prints straight up like that it takes about 50 minutes and I think the density was like a hundred percent now pretty much the only reason to buy an FR Sky radio these days is because it has the power wireless system in it or if you like the access stuff which I don't in particular however if you own a Radio Master TX16S which a lot of people do it doesn't come with the power wireless system installed into it but because the Radio Master is based on the Horus it has the solder pads and the ability to install the power wireless Bluetooth module into it I'll show you a picture of that and then you need to make sure that you flash your radio master with the Bluetooth option ticked and then it will work so if we go into the menu here on this X90 2019 Tyrannis then this is 
in the Goldilocks zone where it supported multi modules and multi protocols and uh, crossfire as well. So I'm not using the Radio Master, but I confirm that does work. Uh, so once you have updated your Radio Master to have Bluetooth, you can go over to where it says Hardware and then there will be a Bluetooth option which probably blank. You can change that to Trainer and then you should have a local address if your Bluetooth install has worked correctly. Then there is a project on GitHub by a chap called Cliff and what he has done is he has made a GUI specifically for this Arduino board. So you can go on to GitHub here and also donate to Cliff as well. I suggest that you do because this is a fantastic thing that he has done here. There's no flashing Arduino or anything like that. You just download the GUI and it ends up here. And it's a very simple GUI as well. So if I plug the Arduino nano board into a USB port on the computer and what we need to do is double press the white button and that sends it into DFU mode. Okay, so if I now go to firmware and upload firmware, we've got these options here. We want the version that is the non-Para Master. So Para Master is for when you want to take one of these and put it on the other end of your radio, you know, using a barrel connector and then it can speak wirelessly that way if you don't want to install the para wireless system from FR Sky. but I recommend that you do because it's a much neater way with having one of these on the other end of your transmitter you have to plug it into the trainer port and uh, it's just a, a more messy solution. You could build it internally but personally I would go with the FR Sky module if your radio supports it and the Radio Master TX16S, very popular radio. So we want to flash this version here. This is the latest version. So I need to refresh the COM port. There we go. It says COM12 and then upload selected. And then we should get some stuff happening here. Okay, that has programmed successfully so now if I close this one here and go to refresh because it should have come out of DFU mode we've got a different COM port now and I can connect to it there we go and if I move it around like this you should see that the tilt, roll and pan is working. So the next thing we need to do is turn on Bluetooth and we can save to NVM. One of the things that makes this board so great for being a head tracker is the fact that it's got a built-in compass or magnetometer and that stops any drift when it's been used as a head tracker but like any drone that's got a built-in compass it needs to calibrate an offset for any local magnetic interference so it doesn't mess up the numbers and you need to calibrate the one in this board as well so in order to do that we go into the GUI and press calibrate and we need to put it on a flat surface and not touch it at all and we're looking for these blue values to settle down so if we just give that a second and then press next and now I'm just going to lift it up slightly and we're going to move it on all axes making sure that it doesn't really go out of the frame here because you can see that we are trying to get less than 4% wobble currently 13 less than 4.5% variance, less than 15% gaps and less than 5% fit error and we should end up with a circle or sphere once it's complete. You can see that at the moment it won't let me press save because it's not got enough detection points or should I say that it's not got low enough values here and 
you might find that you have done this for a while and you can't get the variance any lower and that's because that you've moved away too much and you'll have to repeat it again. And I've done this a, a few times myself, sometimes it can get it pretty quickly and other times it takes a while. So I will skip on to the point where all of these values are low enough that it will let me press save. Okay, that has done that. You can see I can press save. It did take a couple of goes that. Next, you're going to want to solder two wires. So one to the switch here and one to the switch here for the reset button. Now, this switch here, I will show you, it's connected up in a way that when it's in that position, so the legs are coming out here, then this one and this one are connected and this one and this one are connected. Now we're wanting to make a switch there, so we want to solder either that one and the bottom one or the top one and the bottom one. I have gone for this one here and that one there. It doesn't matter on the colour and then that will make a connection for the switch. Then you're going to need two wires here for your voltage and your ground. This will take up to 20 volts but my V1 DJI goggles only take up to a 4S anyway so I'm going to be using a 4S LiPo. On the end of here I have soldered them to these row of pins that actually come with the Arduino board and then that is going to plug into the pins on the FPV goggles. Now I don't want to plug them in the wrong way so what I've done is I, I know that the bottom pin is voltage in and the third pin is ground. Now you could have all of the pins here but the problem that you have if you use these pins is something shorting on the board here. So I've used four pins and I know that this one is always the bottom. I'm probably going to keep it in my goggles anyways. And what I've done is I've cut all of the pins really short and then I have covered this in epoxy as well. And I've also epoxied in the switch. So that's in there nicely. So we won't have any shorting anyway. You can use liquid electrical tape to do the same thing. And that's pretty much it. You know, we don't need a barrel connector or anything like that because everything is wireless. So if I grab my goggles here, put these pins in here, and then push this in. Now I've made it so it is really tight fitting. So it's going to take quite a bit of pressing down, but there we go, and it is in. So now it will just power directly off a 4S LiPo. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how I have set it up again in the GUI. So here we are back in the GUI, and you can see if I pan, then the pan moves. If I tilt, the tilt moves, and if I press the reset button, the pan resets and everything resets. You don't need to change the board rotation, at least I didn't, even though it's in this upright axis here. Pressing the button uh, resets that. I've got roll turned off, not using roll tend to find that you don't need roll, it doesn't break immersion, yet when you're viewing back the camera is always nice and level if you don't have the roll. You need another servo for roll as well, but I've got channel 7 on tilt and channel 8 on pan. My gains I've got set to 80 on the pan. It's important to get the gain right because that's how you get your sort of one-to-one -one feel and you can mess around with that. For my head tracking pan and tilt system, 80 on the pan is working and then 115 on the tilt. What you find is if you go past the upward position, the servo will reset if your gain is too high because it thinks that you have gone all the way around and back down like that. So that gain is working for me. You can reverse the direction here, but I think I might have done that 
in iNav, but if you're not using iNav then you can do that here. I love this GUI, it is really simple, much easier than the open head tracker project that Quantum took advantage of with their system. Okay, so if I go into my model now and page over to where it says Master Bluetooth, I'm just going to clear it because I've already done this. You'll have this option here that says Discover. So if I press Discover, you should just get the one code up, but mine's going to bring up a couple because you know, I've been practicing with this. I think it's the bottom one that I need to go off. And if I page then over to my mixes on channel 7 and channel 8 you can see there that the source is trainer 7 and we can have that on a switch so that when it's in the middle position the head tracker is on and when it's in the top position it is off so it's like a, a reset switch also the gain is set to 150, that's just so I'm getting the most out of uh, my particular servo that I'm using. And then you do the same for channel 8, so that's your pan and tilt in. If we just move over to the output, just got a little bit of an offset for the center servo, so that it remains in the center when the switch is in the up position. But now, if I page over to the channels monitor and move this button to the center, which it already is, if I move the goggles around, you can see that that is outputting a pan and a tilt to channels 7 and 8, which will then send that through Crossfire to iNav and I'll show you the bit in iNav as well if you want, if you're using iNav, but if you're sending this just directly to a receiver, then that'll just output to your pan and tilt servos, but if you've got iNav, you will have to add them as a mix, but that is just really easy. Okay, so in iNav, we just go into the mixer, and I've added servos 7 and 8, and you can see that the input is just the RC channel 7 and RC channel 8 and that is everything. I think if we go into the output, ah, I didn't reverse it so that was fine. So that's how you would set it up in iNav as a pass-through. So there you go, that is my completely wireless head tracking setup. I'll put a link in the video description to all of the parts that you need and software and as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers. What is the latency? Can it work with this? Can it work with that?